Continuing the What's on My iPad series, I wanna talk about utility apps next. These are apps that solve particular problems. This video is sponsored by Opal, let's get into it. Files is the obvious app to start with. A file manager is the backbone of any computer. A lot of people complain about files, but it's gotten a lot better over the years. My biggest issue with files is actually the app icon. I hate it. So what I did is I actually went in and replaced it with the Finder icon. I made a shortcut that just opens the Files app. Then I used the Add to Home Screen option and used the Finder icon for the icon of the shortcut. And then I just dragged it into the dock. There are two key parts to the Files app for me. The first is iCloud. I use this for all of my documents and normal storage. I made a documents folder in here and this is the home for all of my files. The second place that I use is the on my iPad section. This is where all of the local files go. None of this stuff syncs to the cloud. I use this for my video projects. Those files are huge and I don't want them constantly syncing to the cloud. The other thing I use files for is interacting with my NAS. Here I'll use the connect to server option and then browse to my NAS. Here I back up all of my video projects, store footage, and also put my raw photos. Third party apps can hook into files as well. One of which that I use is Working Copy. This is a Git app and I use this to interact with my website, but more on this in a bit. In files, you can drag folders to your favorite sections. I've added my documents, downloads, and my Final Cut Pro projects folder here. This way I can quickly jump to those folders. If you wrote off files in the past, I highly encourage you to give it another shot. It's really improved over the last few years. Now it's not perfect by any means, and I really wanna see more improvements come to it, but it's a lot better than what it was a couple of years ago. Copilot is Microsoft's new AI chat app. This uses ChatGPT and Dolly E3. This means you can chat with it and ask questions, or you can ask it to generate an image. Copilot is a free way to use both of these AI services. Unlike ChatGPT, Copilot doesn't have support for shortcuts. Now, I use Copilot all the time and just ask it questions and, you know, very general things that I know it can get. But I also use Copilot to check my spelling and grammar. Whenever I'm sending off like a proposal or email or contract, something like that, I will upload the text to it first, have it check my spelling and grammar, and then send it off because I am horrible at spelling and grammar. Floating Player is a way to force Apple Music or Spotify into a picture-in-picture -picture window on the iPad. The benefit of this is you can see what music is playing while you're in other apps and doing other things. It's just hovering on your screen. You also get the use of playback controls. In the Floating Player app, you can change what the fast forward and rewind tools do in the picture in picture window to be skip and go back for music. This is a really solid app if you like to always see album artwork or metadata or just have playback controls on the screen. RSS is really important to me and my research method. Reader acts as the front end for me reading articles, but the service I use to actually gather up all of my articles is Feedbin. The big thing that sets Feedbin apart from just using like a iCloud Sync or other RSS services is Feedbin gives you an email address. So that way when you sign up for newsletters, you can have those newsletters go into your RSS feed instead of your email inbox. And just the way my brain works, I would much prefer that. I get so much junk in my email. So in Reader, I log into Feedbin and that syncs all of my feeds to my device. I also really like Reader's design. Out of all of the RSS apps on the App Store, I think it just stands above them when it comes to design. It also has support for arrow key gestures to jump between articles and touch gestures to swipe between articles as well. Raindrop IO has become my go-to read it later and bookmarking app. I think it was about a year or so ago, it got a big overhaul and it's now a really solid native app with a nice syncing back end. Typically when I save an article for later, I wanna open it back up in the original web page when I go to read them. Some of the reading views and other read it later apps strip content or have issues with video playback or images or things like that. So I would honestly rather just prefer to read the article on the web. 
Now, this isn't just a read it later service. It's also great for bookmarking links, which is a big use for me. I save stuff that I wanna buy, YouTube videos I wanna watch, apps I wanna cover, and more in here. When saving an article or a link, I just use the share sheet integration. It works really well in any app from Safari to whatever. Raindrop uses a tagging system. This is how I organize all of my links and break things up. It even has great icon support, like Pokeballs for building out different collections. Whenever I get a bit of time to kill, Raindrop IO is usually the app I open up first to kind of go through and see what I have saved here, see what I want to check out. Maybe I might get an idea for a video or two. This video is sponsored by Opal. Speaking of utilities, a device I really like to use with my iPad is the Tadpole from Opal. This is an extremely portable and small webcam designed to travel with you. It's smaller than an AirPods case. The idea behind this is work no longer happens exclusively in a typical office environment or even at a desk. What's great about this is you can clip it onto your iPad anywhere. This means when you're having a video call, you can be looking straight into the camera when talking to somebody and not off to the side like with the built-in camera. It uses the Sony IMX582 sensor to give you an excellent image, much better than built-in webcams. It plugs right into the side of your computer with USB-C. It has a directional microphone system, so it's just picking up your voice and not the environment around you. There is also a capacitive touch button that allows you to quickly mute or unmute yourself. This uses premium material, so it not just looks nice, it feels nice, and it's only $129. Use the link in the description below and use the promo code CHRISTOPHER and you get 15% off. My thanks to Opal for sponsoring this video. Surfed is an app that gives you advanced browsing history. The way I think about this is it's kind of a backup for all of the websites I visit. Once you set up the Safari extension, it logs all of your traffic. Now you can change settings between it syncing across your devices or logging private browsing or whatever. Now, what I like about this is if I close a tab or use another device and I wanna pull something up I saw a while ago, I can just search for it. It's a really helpful tool to have. In fact, it was really helpful for a certain Christmas present that I bought last year. I, I found something I really wanted and then I accidentally closed that tab. I didn't realize it at the time and a few days passed and I was able to use Surf to search for it and bring that exact page back up. In Surf, you can set up smart collections. This will go and take stuff from specific domains and build out a group for them. I use this to bring all the stuff that I've looked at through Amazon together. This also pulls all of the YouTube videos I've watched together. You can manually create these collections or there is a built-in gallery you can pick from. Collections can also be based on devices, times visited, and other criteria. Surfed is a great utility to just have running in the background because you never know when you'll need it. One of the biggest features people request for the iPad is a built-in calculator app. Now, by the way, Spotlight is a calculator. You can do calculations right from Spotlight. But PCalc has been my go-to calculator for years. It's on the iPhone, iPad, Mac, and even the Apple TV. Now, this is a scientific calculator. So right off the bat, it does a ton of stuff I don't need, or if I'm gonna be honest, stuff that I don't even really know what it does. What I like about it though, is it scales really nicely on the iPad, especially with Stage Manager. When I'm working on the finance side of my business, I just keep it open off to the side in a small window. There's even options to build custom calculator layouts in the app. You can also change the theme of the app, and of course there are a ton of icons to pick from. PCalc is the best calculator on the App Store. Shortcuts is a huge utility for me. In fact, it's so big, I gave it its own video. That video should already be out by now, but if it's not, it'll be out very soon. Shortcuts are blocked-based automations. I have shortcuts for building in different task managers, uh, another for handling different text snippets, some for playing music throughout my house, and more. 
Shortcuts is a really powerful utility. If you aren't taking advantage of it already, you should. I have a bunch of tutorials on how to use shortcuts that I will link to in the description below, along with every other app I mention. Fontcase is my go-to app for installing fonts on the iPad. This is something I really wish Apple would make a lot easier just by bringing the app Fontbook to the iPad. They tried a whole nother process a few years ago, but it never clicked. With Fontcase, you can grab the font files and you install a profile onto your device. Any app that supports custom fonts should now see those fonts available. This could be stuff like Photoshop, Drafts, Final Cut, Obsidian, whatever. As somebody that does a lot of graphics work, this is really important for me to have. Ouchie is an app that helps me fight my ADHD. This is an app that you can use to set up to block other apps at specific points. Now I set this up to run with my mode cut shortcut when different focuses become enabled. This way, if I'm writing and I open up, uh, you know, Ivory or Threads or Discord, it will automatically just close that app when I should be focused on my writing. This works really well with the web as well and will block sites like Reddit for me. It's kind of a nice gentle reminder for me to stay on task. Ouchie is really powerful. You can enable these reminders manually or do what I did and build them into shortcuts. But the key is to remember to build in the turn off action into something like a reset shortcut. So that way it just doesn't stay on all the time and you can't access your fun apps. Orion is an app that was enabled thanks to iPadOS 17 and its capture card support. With help from the capture card, this turns your iPad into a portable display. You can use this to plug in just about any device that has HDMI into it and turn your iPad into a portable display. I'll link to my capture card recommendation in the description below. It's usually really cheap, around 20 bucks US. What's great about Orion is you can use this to set up a portable monitor for playing video games. And if you're using something that's limited to 1080p, say the Nintendo Switch, Orion has a built-in upscaling mode. So if you're using that 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the micro LED display, you get a beautiful 4K image. Or if you're playing classic games, you can turn on a CRT filter for just pure nostalgia. Camo is another app that takes advantage of the capture card support. You can plug in a game console or a camera using the capture card. Then you can stream to places like YouTube or Twitch. You can even set it up that you can use the built-in camera from the iPad and the capture card at the same time. Perfect for live streaming, playing games, or doing a demo. With Camo, you can set up different scenes. I used this for a private video demo not too long ago, and it worked out extremely well. I've been kicking around the idea of doing some kind of like monthly AMA, and if I do do this, I will 100% be using Camo for it. Xsearch is a Safari extension. This speeds up your ability to search different websites. Most people know you can just type in a phrase in the URL bar, and it will use your default search engine to find the results for that. With Xsearch, you can use different phrases specifically for different websites. So for me, I can type A, then a space, and then search for something on Amazon, or type in Apple and search for a product on Apple's website, YT, and then type in something I wanna search for on YouTube, or Reddit and search for something on Reddit. And there's a lot more. There's actually a whole gallery of options in Xsearch that you can pick from, from DuckDuckGo to Wikipedia to a whole bunch of websites. I don't even know what they do. I really like this for just cutting out a couple of extra steps from when I'm searching for something specifically on a certain website. So have you ever seen those pop-up prompts about cookies and stuff. Super Agent is an app that just takes care of those automatically. So you go into the Super Agent app, set up your preferences, and then when you go to a website that has those cookie prompts, it takes care of them for you automatically. It's really nice to have to just kind of speed up your browsing. Total Refresh is another Safari extension. This gives you a single button to refresh all of your open tabs. This is really helpful in a Safari window that gets kicked out of RAM, or you just need to refresh everything at once. It's not something I use a lot, but when I do need it, it's really helpful. Vidimote gives you playback controls in your browser. This can include options like playback speed, full screen, picture in picture, and more. If you watch a lot of videos through Safari, this is definitely an extension to check out. 
RuneStone is a text editor I've been using for writing code. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of development work right now. Most of my stuff is uh, working on the next version of my website. RuneStone has syntax support for a ton of different languages. RuneStone also hooks into the Files app, which is really nice, so you can just pull up text documents right from files. I don't have a ton to say about RuneStone just because I don't do a lot of development work anymore, but if you do write code, edit text files, or just open up plain text documents, it's a great app for that. Working Copy is the app I mentioned earlier when we were talking about files. This is a Git app. It's the best Git app on the App Store. But what I do use Working Copy for is managing my website. My website is hosted through a service called blot.im. It's just a bunch of plain text files, nothing special happening here. Now I edit these files in RuneStone and publish via Working Copy. But with Working Copy, I'm also able to automate the posting to my website with shortcuts. If you do anything with Git, check out Working Copy. So that's it. Those are all of the utility apps on my iPad. Let me know what your favorite utility app is in the comments below. My thanks to Opal for sponsoring this video. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.